The Alibaba company Quint just launched Quint 3 Coder, which is a really, really powerful open model. It's not a closed model. It's an open model. Once again, China strikes back. They've got a new open model that is very huge in size. It's a mixture of experts model. In this video, we're going to talk about that model. We're going to test the model briefly. Let's get started. Quint 3 just announced agentic coding in the world. So this is a model that is focused primarily on agentic coding with amazing, amazing benchmark result. This is a 480 billion parameter model with 35 billion parameter active parameters. MOE is unlike the dense architecture, it has got total number of parameters and also it's got a set of active parameters through which every single token will go. So this way you can have a huge model with a really great knowledge but you don't need a huge compute because part of the model gets activated during the inference time when the model is being used. By training, they have trained it with 256,000 context window. The most interesting part is first of all, 256,000 itself is great. I think if you use OpenAI, you get to see something like 128K. So in terms of context window for a programming model, 256K is amazing. But what they've done is also that you can extrapolate the 256K to 1 million token context window using yarn. Now, this is extremely helpful for cases like repo scaling. So if you want to read an entire repo, um, there is a GitHub repo, you want to read it, you want to fix the bug, you want to solve issues, then scaling it to 1 million token is really good. Problem, generally the problem with scaling a large language model to 1 million context window is that you need to be able to serve it. And that is also where this model is good because this is an MOE model. Only 35 billion parameter is active. So even though you have got 480 billion overall total parameters. So this is a like a really good candidate for a really good model if you want an on-prem setup. Now having said that, now if you were to compare the model's benchmarks, the model is doing pretty good on a very popular benchmark called Sweep Bench. Sweep Bench is a SWE Bench. It's a benchmark where you have got a bunch of GitHub issues and these LLMs are expected to solve the GitHub issue. Now Sweebench verified is a slightly uh, narrowed version of Sweebench where you have a specific set of tasks picked from Sweebench. Now if you see this particular model, Quen3 Coder, it has out of box, it has scored 67%. When you compare it with Claude Sonnet 4, 68%. When you compare it with Gemini 2.5 Pro, the older version, which is 49%, GPT 4.1, 54%. So out of box, this is a great model. To give you a perspective, the DeepSeek model, which everybody loves and uses, the R1 model has got 41%. The previous Quinn, the general purpose model that they launched has got scored 34%. So out of box, the model is absolutely stunning for programming and that is reflecting in this particular benchmark. Now, when you increase the number of turns, like one thing that a lot of companies these days do is, one, they show you zero shot score and also they show you the score where they query the model again and again, then, you know, select the best of it. So if you do 500 turns with the same model from 67%, it goes to 69.6%, .6%, which is Claude Sonnet, seven, uh, Claude Sonnet 4 has got 70% 4. So almost like 0.8 percentage point difference between Claude Sonnet 4 and Quen3 Coder. Now, mind you that this is Anthropic is like a company with, you know, millions of funding. Quen3 Coder model is available for free, provided that you have got enough compute. You can literally download the model and start using it. It's no joke at all. And it is very interesting. I mean, the fact that you can use such a large model and it's available for free. Somebody's just giving it to you know, and you can use it is really, really amazing to see. Now, another very interesting thing about this model is the details that they've shared in terms of pre-training and post-training. And there are a couple of interesting attributes there. First of all, if you're not familiar with pre-training, internet has got a lot of data. Somebody has to take the data and then train a large language model, right? Now, when they train a large language model, there are a couple of choices that they have to make. How much data that they need, what is the composition of the data, how much programming language they have to put, how much English they have to put. These are like, you know, uh, the choices that uh, large language model providers or uh, model trainers make. So here in this particular model, you can see Quen3 Coder, they've scaled it like anything. So they've used 7.5 trillion tokens, 7.5 trillion tokens, out of which 70% is this programming. So there is like a the text dump on internet, whatever that they've prepared for data. That is 7.5 trillion token. It's huge. But out of the 7.5 trillion, 70%, probably like more than five, um, approximately, 
should be code. And that is exactly why it is excellent with coding, but also preserves the general and math capabilities because it's got like the 30% of non-coding things. Second thing is we have discussed about context. Um, so first is scaling token, second is scaling context, and third is scaling synthetic data. Again, very, very interesting thing. See, one of the biggest problems with uh, training a large language model is a large language model is going to capture a signal from the data that you give. So the cleaner the data, the better the model is because Gigo, garbage in, garbage out. So what Quent team has done is they've leveraged Quent 2.5 coder, which is like the previous version model to clean and rewrite noisy data and significantly improve the data quality. So now when you take stuff from internet, like you go to Stack Overflow, you have right answer, you have wrong answer, you have a wrong answer marked as right answer sometimes. So internet is kind of like a dump yard. Now what they've done is instead of taking like all the dump as it is, they have used Quain 2.5 coder to fix, to rewrite some codes, to rewrite noisy data so that when they have built this pipeline, their training data is like really of great quality. Very interesting. I've not seen companies mentioning it. Maybe they are doing it, but this is very interesting to see. In terms of post-training, post-training is a process. Once you have a base model, then you try to do uh, the SFT supervised fine tuning. Then you try to do RL uh, reinforcement learning. In fact, uh, recently it's popular RLVR reinforcement learning with verifiable rewards. There are like a lot of different aspects to it. So what they are saying is that in real world software engineering tasks, um, uh, if you see Quen uh, 3 coder must engage in a multi um, chat environment. So if you want an agent, you're not going to like go to the agent and then say something and then just come out. You're going to have like multiple conversation with the agent, right? Like you're going to say, hey, can you fix it? Um, make messes up. Um, can you fix it again? Anybody who has used cursor can actually relate to the feeling. So because of this reason, because you need a multi turn conversation, multiple interaction where, you know, it has to do planning, feedback, a lot of different things. In the post training phase of 23 coder, they have introduced something called long horizon RL, long horizon reinforcement learning, an agent reinforcement learning to encourage the model to solve the real world tasks through multi-turn interaction using tools. The key challenge of agent RL lies in environment scaling. To address this, we built a scalable system capable of running 20,000 independent environments in parallel leveraging Alibaba's cloud infrastructure. The infra provides the necessary feedback for large scale reinforcement learning and supports evaluation at scale. As a result, Quen3 Coder achieves SOTA performance among the open source models for SWE bench verified without test time scaling. No thinking. Without test time scaling, this model has achieved 60, uh, 67%. And uh, when you have like multi turn conversation, it is like 69.6%. The most interesting aspect is like now, I think almost every company has decided that they have to scale RL. If you know the Grok 4 announcement, uh, Grok 4 also had scaled the reinforcement learning. Scaling law says that once you scale data, once you scale parameter size of the model, once you scale compute, it is expected the model would do both better. The, I mean, that was scaling law. And now I think the scaling law also applies to the reinforcement learning part of it. And we have seen Grok 4 doing it. Now we are seeing it with Quent 3 coder as well. But also they have scaled it in such a way that they can have like 20,000 independent parallel environments. The model will learn by itself to solve real world problems during multi turn conversation, not just one conversation. It's like, let's do step by step, but it is actually doing step by step. Very interesting. I would love to see um, how the Quen 3 coder is doing on IMO, which you know, on which like Google and uh, app, uh, OpenAI got gold middle level performance. This is primarily about Quen 3 coder. I'm going to quickly jump into the demo and show you, you know, how the model is. So there are like much of benchmarks. You can just go see like the charts and all those things, performance, how it goes. Like, as you can see, like it's uh, as you scale it, like it's going up, right? That's that's what the scaling part is. Um, once you do it longer, it just goes up. So you can see training step increases. SQL is better. Uh, competitive coding, better. Data analysis is better. Very interesting aspect. Now, in terms of the model's ben, uh, performance, I tried the model a couple of uh, with a couple of tasks and model did a great job, even for zero shot. So they've got the demo. I'll link it in the YouTube description. I said, design a beautiful tailwind minimalistic landing page that looks like a Barbie themed candy shop. That's that's all the information I have given. So it created something called sweet dreams. Sweetest dreams come true. Indulge in magical collection of handcrafted candies, cupcakes, sweet treats, blah, blah, blah. 
and you can see it's very interesting like um it's it's created uh, the small icons it used it very well uh, the the palette the color palette that it has used with uh, you know different shades of pink is really good and uh, you can see there is testimonial there. and this is all zero shot um you can see i've not done anything at all uh, other than just zero shot it has added like the fb logo the insta logo the pinterest logo and then you have got quick links and you know it's added everything there including the footer all rights re reserved made with love um, very interesting you can try a lot of different things like for example you can say uh, let me refresh this so that we know we start from the scratch it would take uh, some time for it to actually do it uh, the other way you can access quen is you can go to their interface so you can go to quen chat.quen.ai even without logging in you can access the model so you can just go ahead and then test like i recently had a big problem with my mac so i'm going to just describe that case and then see if it solves the problem so my um my mac uh, decided to die and uh, it did not not wake up after the update so after the update to 15.5 i don't want you to do search hopefully um what should i do just give me steps in bullets so you want to see how good it can follow instruction as well i know you might think that this is like a general purpose question you can see it is doing all those things one thing that i'm expecting is to see if it can say that uh, i have to get into dfu mode um okay this is a uh, an apple silicon mac and i already did all these there is one more thing let's see okay so yeah it's a dfu mode i had to prompt it a little bit um, but you can see that it says i have to do the dfu mode like i had to go to the service center to get this done and uh, it says um um i'm not i'm not 100% sure like the dfu mode step is correct uh, I have to use Apple configurator that is fine but I think the DFU mode step ideally is like the shift um, command a bunch of buttons so there is some mistake there but uh, I'm testing a coding model so I without search ideally I would have uh, switched on search and then done this good and well now going back to the demo that we are trying to do um, design a simple simple physics game where I can throw a ball at a bunch of objects use any icon you want and it should be like a sling shot and the scoreboard should be there <coughs> okay submit it and you can see it starts producing the code you can do the same thing on their platform as well so it will generate the code and then it will render it and then do it and as you can see here it's uh, technically a react code and it started designing um, one thing that they they pride upon is that they say that uh, the model is really good with uh, the understandings of the gaming like coding and everything so you can see the demo that they've got a physics based simulation here so this is like testing how the controlled explosion would go and they've got a bunch of other things that people have been uh, trying um, so if you want to design your own uh, keyboard uh, speed tracking you can do that while while the code is um, you know the generation is happening um, another interesting thing that they've launched is they've launched a cli a command level utility um, interface this is very similar like cloud code a gemini coder whatever you know the interface that you have been using so here if you want to use it you can go download it and then use it a very similar setup i am yet to do the testing for this but if you want to just you know skip the part of my video and then start doing it yourself then you can just go see the in uh, instructions here i'll link it in the youtube description it just all you have to do is install it the only catch here is that you have to set up this open ai based environment variable so it supports open ai compatible api endpoints so you have to just set up that and then you can start using it this is extremely also useful let's say you want to do the on prem setup let's say you want to work as a system integrator you want to do the on prem setup of this for enterprises i think now you have got a model that is like really huge in size really highly capable now you have got a cli uh, gemini could have done it but you know now you have got quen model and then you can just marry these things together you have got a very powerful local coding assistant i mean i'm not saying that everybody can run this model but if you have got a really good instra, um, enterprise setup you can definitely go deploy this model because it requires only 35 billion parameter active model um 
and uh, the total model size is 480 billion and i think apple has got like a unified compute which is like 512 gigs um, maybe with the fp8 uh, you should be able to run that as well so you can see it is still running it is finished running now it is rendered it for us so let's see if we can do where do i launch it from okay like this whoa 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 okay okay uh, it's wow i'm smashing them uh, okay i mean um okay not what i expected uh <laughs> but it is doing something the score is not getting updated so it also uses multi-turn dialogue so i can go chat with it because the history stays there i can go chat with it and then do that but generally like in terms of basic coding tasks like for example if you want to just say um how can i make a bar chart with uh, python but i want it to look like ggplot for very simple questions it's absolutely leaning see it like right out of the box it told me to use plot 9 and uh, we would definitely test this model extensively later in this uh, later in a different video but for now let me know what you think about this model and i wanted this to be a slightly detailed video about the model training process apologies if it has taken longer time see you in another video happy prompting